have had a chance to um, finish competing and judges have collaborated. So big thank you to our competitors. Also, again, a big thank you to our judges. So thank you. And we will take a pause until we start back up at 10 o'clock for our social studies comp competition. Thank you, everybody. All right, everybody, welcome, or in some cases, welcome back to the Grants Pass High School Local Academic Master's Competition. Uh, for those that are newly tuning in, we are happy to receive you and glad that you're tuning in to our live stream event. A uh, few quick notes. Uh, we have, the, earlier this morning, had some intermittent connectivity issues, and so it looks like we got through the first uh, competition, our English competition, just fine. Uh, but just to note, in case there's uh, connectivity issues, that may occur. But in that case, we are recording this on YouTube, so it will be available for viewing later. Just a quick comment also on safety measures. Uh, we have very few people in this auditorium. If I'm not sure what you can quite see from home. Uh, just a few judges, a couple of technical staff, uh, myself, and then the presenter. So we've been given the go-ahead to be able to have uh, masks off for just the person presenting at that time, and then masks are back on. So when our presenters come on stage, they will remove their mask as they present so we, they can be clearly heard and understood in their presentation. All right. Uh, students today are competing for the right to represent Grants Pass High School in the County Academic Masters competition. That will be held on Wednesday, March 10th and that will be here at Grants Pass High School. Competitors will have a maximum of five minutes to present their responses to the question that has been given to them. All competitors receive the same question or choice of questions. Competitors will be notified when there is one minute remaining for their response. Each competitor receives the same amount of time to prepare for his or her verbal response to the question. The final winner is determined by a variable total of the student score on the written test taken earlier this month and their performance competition today. Our second competition today will be social studies. Our judges, and I'll have each of them wave as I introduce them, uh, Diane Mackin, Pam McNulty, and Corey Ely. So we thank them for their time and efforts in, in judging our uh, competitors today. Our question, social studies question. How did the United States try to stop the spread of communism during the Cold War, 1945 to 1991, discuss the policies enacted and actions taken during this time period? Our first competitor in social studies is Owen Ledesma. Owen, you can go ahead and walk up on stage. Owen is the son of Jed and Erica Ledesma. He is a junior here at Grants Pass High. Owen is involved in Chamber Orchestra, National Honor Society, and Track and Field. Owen is also an Eagle Scout. Owen has plans to go on a two-year church mission and then attend college and major in either a medical or engineering field. Owen says that Mr. Fry has influenced him the most. He said that he gave lots of opportunities, homework, to see worldviews in a straightforward way, and that built grit. In his spare time, Owen enjoys exercising, getting outside, as well as reading and building things. His favorite movie is Princess Bride, because it has good lines, action, romance, and comedy all rolled into one. Owen said his favorite high school memory has been having peers to talk, discuss, and study with instead of his keyboard. Please welcome Owen Ledesma. So we're talking about the Cold War. And this is an interesting topic. Okay. Um, so this is a kind of a broad topic. But the big uh, competition, I guess, that was the Cold War. Um, started after 1945, the end of World War II. 
And in the power vacuum that um, filled the world, I guess, what was left after World War II was a lot of countries, their economies, and their ways of life were different or broken. And so the two big dogs left in the room were the USA and the USSR. Um, and that, and so they were left with the responsibility of rebuilding the world. Um, so they disagreed on that. A lot of that had to do with the differences between um, how to set up governments in Eastern Europe and the rest of the world. Um, so the United States wanted a democracy um, for these countries, and the USSR wanted uh, communism. So over time, the U.S. developed a policy of containment. Um, it's kind of like when you spill water. You can't stop the fact that you spilled water, but you can try to stop the spill, I guess, wipe it up. Um, so they went with the policy of containment, and they used three main things, economy, military, and political maneuvering, to back this up. Um, the military, how it was used, differed a lot from president to president. Um, some presidents built up a nuclear arsenal of weapons. Other presidents um, used the military to stop other militaries. An example of this would be when North Korea, backed by the communist USSR, um, invaded, North Korea, um, invaded South Korea. Sorry. And the U.S., um, under the United Nations, went to stop that um, with the military. Uh, another example of this would be Vietnam. A uh, similar story. The U.S. had a was backing the South Vietnamese government. And uh, when the North Vietnamese, um, when war became inevitable and the U.S. sent more and more troops there, um, the military was used to defend the liberties and security of that area. Um, the CIA was used to train insurgents in countries, and this is another um, use of the military. Not necessarily the CIA did any fighting, but they would train other countries' militaries to fight for themselves against communists. Uh, another important thing to remember is that communism and is also a, it's not just a political theory, it's also an economical thing. So that was a big part of the competition of the Cold War. Um, Eastern Europe was, the economies were toast after World War II. Everything, just trying to get everything back on board was a major problem. And so, of course, the U.S. and the USSR disagreed on the best ways to do that. Um, so they ended up splitting uh, Europe. They had Western Europe under the control of the U.S. and Eastern Europe under the control of the USSR. Communism, democracy. Um, Berlin was also split in half. Um, West Berlin and East Berlin, West being under the control of the U.S., and the USSR, so the U.S. under the Marshall Plan sent lots of money into Europe. They built up economies and tried to get, just show everyone living in Eastern Europe, look how great we are, look how great democracy is and capitalism and all this money um, that we can give these countries. And so they also used this money um, to support the Berlin, Berlin Airlift to send supplies into communist landlocked uh, West Berlin when the communists thought to um, stop American influence there. Political maneuvering, a lot of this happened uh, with different uh, threats. There's a lot of threats, compromises. Um, when you're dealing with nuclear weapons, and if you say, I want to do this, and then someone says, no, we'll do it, we'll nuke you, and then they say back, but then we'll nuke you, and then we're all dead. So that stopped a lot of conflicts from happening in the first place. Um, the space race was a big part of this, and a good example of the Compromising would be the Cuban Missile Crisis. The United States used p political leverage to remove um, USSR-backed uh, missile silos from Cuba, and they did this exchange for removing some missiles for Turkey from Turkey that were placed there by the U.S. Uh, so, in conclusion, to wrap up, the USSR and the USSA, um, the USSA, the USA, that's us. Uh, both used their militaries, their economical and political influence to shape the world after World War II, and the world that they made is the world that we live in today. And that's all. Thank you. Great job, Owen. Way to go. Our next competitor in social studies is Isabella Burns-Smith. Isabella, you can come out on stage now. Isabella is the daughter of Kimberly Burns. 
She is a freshman here at Grants Pass. Isabella is involved in speech and debate. Isabella has plans to attend college and earn a master's degree. She wants to become an author, so majoring in either English or literature, or possibly film or psychology as well. Isabella says that Mrs. Brown, her sixth grade history teacher, has influenced her the most because she's a lovely lady. She thought the importance of words and knowledge and idea I hold deeply myself as well. In her spare time, Isabella enjoys reading, writing, painting, and doing research. She also collects rocks, coins, and other interesting oddities. Her favorite movie is Iron Sky. Isabella says it's a strange but imaginative movie. It is her favorite for the sheer creativity in the film with wonderful imagery and weird but interesting characters. Isabella doesn't have a favorite high school memory yet because she's only a freshman. So perhaps Isabella today is your favorite high school student. Please welcome Isabella Burns-Smith. Hello. Um, the Cold War itself had a grandiose effect on the modern era, and the tension from the war itself now 30 years over, still has left a great scar on America's relationship with previous and current communist countries. And just as the Communist Party fueled their own fires with propaganda supporting themselves and casting shadows on those against them, so did the Americans, publishing their own anti-Russian propaganda. Although the war was a cold and long one, mounting nuclear arsenals on both sides raised to almost boiling tensions to then become red hot. Now, with nuclear power unrivaled and unchecked, it would lead to chaos, each side with more than enough power to wipe the fear clean. With these things in mind, it comes as no surprise that even though the war was a mostly quiet thing happening, happening, but not the core thing on the minds of everyone, like wars before and during its period. Its impact on our current worldwide climate and political climate is still evident. Great job, Isabella. Our next social studies competitor is Magdalene Herzig. This is Magdalene's second appearance today as she competed earlier in English. Magdalene is the daughter of Jeremiah Herzig and Christine Benson. She is a senior here at Grants Pass High. Magdalene is a captain on the speech and debate team and is the president of the Z Club and Pride Club. She is also involved in theater, craft and origami club, book club, and has participated in the state of Jefferson's scavenger hunt. Magdalen wants to study stories and learn from them, whether it be history, literature, playwriting, or theater. Her top schools are Bennington College in Vermont or Smith College in Massachusetts. Magdalene has been influenced by Ms. Weber, our district librarian. Magdalene said she has safeguarded the best place on campus and has been a pillar of support for the four years I've attended Grants Pass High School. She also has provided me with obscure historical texts and passionate conversations about the meaning of literary works, both of which are primary reasons I'm here today. In her spare time, Magdalene loves to watch chess tournaments, play Dungeons and Dragons, read and bake bread. Fun fact, in the second grade, Magdalene read 1,000 books in one school year, and they threw her a pizza party. Her favorite movie is Ponyo because it is a joyous film with messages about self-acceptance, found family, and environmentalism. She said her favorite high school memory was competing in the state of Jefferson's scavenger hunt. She said the combination of skipping class, eating in the library, and rigorous academic pursuit creates assimilating waste of time 
one that captures the best part of the high school experience. Please welcome Mag Magdalene Herzig. So the Cold War is this incredibly interesting part of American history, especially in shaping the American identity. Before I get into the whole stopping communism thing, I want to discuss uh, what happens in America, specific, specifically with the American people. Um, so the first thing that comes to mind usually when we think about the Cold War is like the Red Scare, targeting influential people, suspecting them of communist behavior, and ruining their lives. McCarthyism didn't affect the everyday American as much as the famous and powerful, but psychologically and sociologically, this essentially put the nail in the cough coffin and was the confirmation of the American individual's worldview. Uh, individualism, as opposed to collectivism, is the value of one's own uh, one owned one's own goals above the goals of the group. And this is something that has shaped the American identity ever since the Cold War. Um, it's also an incredibly capitalist way of living your life, which I find incredibly entertaining. But overseas, the United States and the USSR would channel their resources into what were, uh, in, into what were considered third world nations. That's a little bit of an outdated term but it emerged during the Cold War. So, and these nations were dependent upon location. So uh, the USSR would try to get uh, countries that were closer to America, and the US would try to get countries that were, uh, or try to influence countries that were closer to the USSR. Um, and this was both a symbol of economic prosperity and power but the US and the USSR would use these puppet countries in fight puppet wars. I think one really good example of a war that started because of like US, USSR influence is uh, the Korean War. Uh, it's um, the US, uh, Korea is very close uh, to uh, some greater Soviet powers. So the U.S. was influencing uh, Korea, and that essentially started the Korean Civil War, which fractured Korea into North Korea and South Korea. Um, and it was during the Cold War that the CIA started its still-standing tradition of overthrowing communist governments, uh, socialist governments, whatever. The CIA tried so hard uh, to assassinate Fidel Castro that some of their attempts were just incredibly uh, ridiculous, not to mention uh, the Bay of Pigs fiasco, which was um, in training uh, exiled people into storming Cuba and overthrowing them. It's used as a uh, it's used as like an example for groupthink, which is the tendency for groups to make bad decisions in almost every psychology class and textbook. Um, so, but I'm not trying to diminish the severity of like the fear that the, uh, the, the United States probably felt during occasions like the Cuban Missile Crisis. Having a nuclear weapon pointed right at you is never a fun experience. But it was a fun insight into what every country the U.S. has a military base or not on or next to probably feels. Um, potentially the most productive use of time spent beating the Russians was the race to develop new technology. The new technology that was found and focused on during the Cold War changed the lives of everyday Americans. And it got us on the moon, which was uh, pretty exciting. But I mean, as seen in Berlin, there's usually uh, two sides to every coin. And there are good things and bad things that came uh, with the United States interference or the, the United States attempts to prevent communism. Um, the, they were probably a little too eager to crush this ideology and not eager enough to fight an authoritarian government but um, the good 
initiatives and inventions and ideas that came out of this struggle are incredibly valuable to American life and history. Thank you. Great job, Mangalen. Very good. Our last competitor in social studies is Henry Goff. Henry is the son of Rachel and Robert Goff. He was a junior here at Grants Pass High. He's involved in chamber orchestra and is currently the concert master. Henry has plans to go on a two-year church mission and then attend college at BYU. Henry couldn't just pick one teacher who has influenced him the most. He said that they have all influenced me in, a different, way, in different ways to make me the person I am today. In his spare time, Henry enjoys playing his violin, reading, and being outside. His favorite movie is Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, because he's a huge Star Wars fan, and this is the best movie of them all. Fun fact, Henry qualified to compete in music, social studies, and English. He was only able to compete in two this year and chose social studies and music. Please welcome Henry Goff. After the fall of Hitler and the suppression of Nazism, the world gave way to another superpower in Eurasia. The vast, large, and barren Russia had finally made its way into the, um, up the chain of power. Socialists, Marx, Marxists, and communists let their ideas fly. Nuclear weapons were stockpiled, and war in nations surrounding was inevitable. The US, in their belief of democracy, sought to destroy the tyranny that came with communism. The U.S., in their attempts to stop the spread of communism, provided military aid in times of war against the communist spread, and spread their own idealism of democracy to enable to stop um, the spread of communism during the Cold War. In times of communism, the um, um, communist leaders were um, going to surrounding countries um, around Russia, um, which Russia was this, um, the communist center of um, the world, and they were spreading their ideas to other countries, which led to war in countries and, and um, against countries. Um, one, of the, um, one of these wars was the Korean War, um, which, um, from the influence of communism, um, communist enthusiasts, the divide of North and South Korea was, uh, was from the effects of communism and the U.S. efforts to stop the spread of communism. The, nor the North, um, North uh, Korea allied uh, around a communist leader to try and take over the entirety of um, Korea. However, um, in, the South Korea, in South Korea's efforts to um, have a democratic um, society. Um, the U.S. Pr provided military support trying to stop the spread of communism. And although this led um, to part of Korea um, still under the influence of communism, the U.S. did, to a point, stop um, the spread of communism. Another example is the Vietnam War. Um, from, from the attacks of the Viet Cong, which was a com communist um, party and regime. Um, Vietnam was endangered um, of being lost to communism and, and therefore the U.S. also pr provided support to try and stop the spread of um, communism. Um, as well as providing um, military aid, the, um, uh, the U.S. also um, tried to spread their own idealism to combat the idealism of communism that was coming from Russia at the time. They, in Central American countries, they um, sought to spread um, revolutionism um, and um, democracy to try and change governments and um, to be more like the U.S. in a way that it's a democratic republic. 
Um, this also happened within South Korea as the U.S. tried to sp or, um, supported the spread of democracy in this region and um, ultimately ended up succeeding to a point in spreading this democracy in combat with the spread of communism. From, from the Russian standpoint, um, in, during the end of communism, um, dictators became more and more susceptible to change. And this led to the superpower of communism, which was Russia, becoming a democracy, ultimately ending the Cold War in 1991. Ronald Reagan met with the Russian leader to um, confirm this um, relation between um, governments. Um, in conclusion, overall, the U.S. played a large part in the end of communism through their military aid and um, uh, to other countries and spread of um, democracy to other countries. Um, ultimately, the, uh, Russia was uh, Russia became a democracy and um, ended the Cold War, um, leading um, the United States to have a big effect on um, the outcome of communism. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Very good job. Uh, at this time, I would like to bring the four competitors for social studies back on stage and congratulate them on a job well done. Owen Ledesma, Isabel Burns-Smith, Magdalene Herzig, and Henry Goff. We'll get them up on the center of the stage, and we're going to get a picture of them just at this moment. Record it on camera. Round of applause for our social studies competitors. <laughs> Great job, you guys. Uh, at this time, our judges are going to collaborate and review. And once they have a decision, we will announce all five academic masters categories, uh, the winners tomorrow morning. So we look forward to that. And again, thank you to the competitors, to the judges, and all those putting this uh, program on. At this time, we are going to be taking a break over lunch. We will gather back at 12.30 p.m. for our science competition, and our live stream will continue. Please tune in at 12.30 for science. Thanks, everybody.